tonight on Missing Persons Unit. Break your alpha one for The search for Alan Kennedy hots up. Someone's been camped here before. Police wonder, is this Alan's campsite? Also, a former Olympian goes missing. And you know who your pals are, don't you, Ray? You know. You know the blokes who you love. In his corner, a giant of the sport pleads for help. If Ray's watching this, can you please report to the police and let them know that everything's okay? And what's happened to mentally disabled 17 year old Emily Servos? He was putting money in the bank for him before jail, in jail, and after jail. If he's got an anger problem himself, well, she's not safe. From every angle, she's not safe. Everybody. Morning. It's 8 a.m. Oh, and man. officers of the missing persons unit are sorting no, through their caseloads. Might start off with you, Liz. We've got a 17-year-old girl reported to Maribra Police Station. She has the mental capacity of a much younger person. Uh, Senior Constable Liz Sakluna gets the case of missing teenager Emily Servos. Emily has been living with her aunt since her mum passed away three months ago. And now she's in a relationship with a new boyfriend. The auntie's got real concerns for her welfare because she's heard them arguing over the um, missing person's disability pension. Oh, OK. It's a worrying one. Mm. Gary and Doug are up in the Blue Mountains assisting with the search for Alan Kennedy. Doug McIntyre and Gary Bailey are still searching for bushwalker Alan Kennedy, now missing for six weeks. Let's hope this case is resolved shortly. That's it from me. Have a great day. In the case of missing girl Emily Servos... Hi. Hello, is that Yvonne? Yes. Hi, Yvonne. It's Senior Constable Sakluna from the Missing Persons oh, Unit. Liz Thank is you. calling yeah, Emily's so distressed aunt, Yvonne, who niece, reported Emily. her missing. How long has it actually been since you've spoken to Emily? Um, five days today, and that was on the telephone, very briefly. Oh, OK. Yes. And what did she actually say? Just basically mumbled away, you know, that she's OK, don't worry about me. You know, she doesn't deal with her emotions at all. Emily, who's 17, is intellectually handicapped and has lived with her aunt since her mum passed away three months ago. I found a piece of paper in her bedroom, um, which was a visitor's thing for jail. Oh, OK. And it went so, well, like to... a min card or something? Yes, yes, something like that. He used to hassle her on the phone because she was putting money in the bank for him before jail, in jail and after jail. And even after her mum passed away, I definitely know she's with Daniel. OK, well, we'll see you very, very soon. Thank you very much. No problems. See you, see you bye, Yvonne. Bye-bye. It's believed she's with um, her boyfriend, uh, whose name is Daniel. Apparently, he's been in and out of jail. Um, and that's probably not the best thing for a 17-year-old who uh, has the mental capacity of a nine-year-old. At the same time, in the Blue Mountains... We just wandered up that gully, are they? The police and emergency services volunteers are still looking for missing granddad, Alan Kennedy. Yeah, we've just reached the furthest point in our search area. We'll, I'll just give you the grid coordinates. In our last program, the Missing Persons Unit launched a new search for Alan. He's 74 years old. He, his vehicle was found actually right here. Police found these glasses right near where he abandoned his car. Good find. The volunteers continued searching caves and along cliff tops. This could be a place to stay for a while. There is real concern that Alan may have planned his disappearance. At this point, we don't know um, whether there's a self-harm issue uh, with his, um, his going missing. But today, on the edge of this remote cliff top, Nathan discovers this campsite. It looks like someone's provisions. We've got um, a billy and some plates. Obviously been here pre the fire. There's some coffee mugs and, and bowls. Quite amazing that these plastic plates got through the heat of this fire. But are they Alan Kennedy's? I don't think you know, this fella brought anything with him. Yeah. Not to this extent. It seems to me now, looking at it, there's definitely more than one person would have used it together, so I think we can probably discount it.
Back in Sydney, police have hit the streets to look for Emily Servos. We were just on our way to Maroubra Police Station to speak with the supervisors there, just to do a bit of a changeover and find out what information they've received in the last 24 hours in relation to our missing person, Emily, the 17-year-old. Liz asked local police to look for Emily at her boyfriend Daniel's home. Police records confirm Daniel has done some time in jail. Uh, we sent um, car crews around addresses in St Mays Hill and Canley Vale. Um, uh, they found that it was, she was never known to be at the address at Canley Vale and uh, there's still some inquiries at St Mays Hill. Now we'll have to um, ring back her next of kin and um, see if we can find out some friends she might be with. And... I believe her mum passed away two That's... months ago as well. I don't think she's been dealing too well with that. so. That could be some, some of the reasons she's uh, moved out that way and up with someone she may not, she shouldn't be with. OK, then. Thanks very much for your help, sir. You're right. See you later. Bye. See you later. Good Thank luck. you. Nothing's come up with those addresses that um, they had gone to before, so we're just going to speak to the next of kin. We've got our photo and we're going to make some further inquiries. and Steve now hope Emily's aunt Yvonne can give them more information on Emily and her boyfriend. She's a restless kid anyway because she's ADD um, and not capable of anything. I've had to stop work. She's been in my care 24 hours. There's times where I've given her a bit of space and let her go because she just feels restricted and just run. She just go all day and come back late afternoon. And running straight to Tony? boyfriend Daniel's unit. How did she meet Daniel? I have no idea. They kept in contact while he was in jail. I found all these letters. We've got to know a bit about him through these letters. I just feel failure here, like, you know, she, um, she was in my care and I've lost her and because and I know her so well, I just feel it's going to get worse from here because she's out there. Yeah. It's a character who's not safe for her. No. You know, if he's got an anger problem himself, well, she's not safe. From every angle, she's not safe. It's six hours after searching started around the remote Mount Hay area, right where Alan Kennedy once spread yep. his wife's ashes. Are you going to come up there or are you going to come back? But police are no closer to finding the missing grandfather. After this sort of exposure over this period of time, uh, particularly with the, the fires. It's made it easier for us to search um, these open areas with the fire having come through, but yes, um, any sort of identification or clothing would have been burned away as well. We'd be definitely looking for bones in this kind of burn area. Even though hope is fading, up on the top of Mount Hay, Doug's team pushes on. Okay, no more movement. Mr Kennedy may have moved over towards a, a lookout or a vantage point on the side of the cliff here and come to grief out there, so we'll just sort of cover those areas. Across the valley, Gary's team uh, knows it's time to, to finally to call the search off. This should be our final sweep. I wouldn't say it would have come beyond here. Not in this terrain. Get everyone hydrated and, and then we'll get back up the top there and, and go back towards the command post. Meanwhile, back on the case of Emily Servos... The missing person uh, may have attended an address in Mascot, so we're just going to attend that address and speak to her and see if we can find some more information. Liz and Steve are at Maria Buckworth's home, where Emily was last seen with her boyfriend. So when was the last time you actually saw Emily? Uh, when did we last see Emily? Last week. Last week. Do you not remember what day it was? No, I don't. The bloke she was with, is with, he told us, but he has, he's out on jail and he has weekends detention or something. Do you know who that person is? Uh, what's his name? Daniel. 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 Oh, okay. Daniel. Righty. How, so how do you know Daniel? Am I involved with all this? We're just hoping that you might have been able to give us a bit of information, no, like you, you might have had a new seen, number or you something. You've seen her? Yes. But then I'll grab yours the case well. becomes a lot more serious. What she's got is her mother's key card. Oh, she's got a mother's key card, has and she? She's trying to get my husband to get the money out for his key card out of her mother's key card. So who told you she actually has her mum? She showed us. She showed me once. Oh. She showed her one yeah. day. So what's actually written on the key card? Just the mother's name. 
and she got the pin number and she got all the money in it. Okay. So I reckon they might have been somewhere and taken the money out of that. Well, right, thank you very much for your help. If Emily does have access to her deceased mother's account, she'll be even harder to find. The day's finally over for the men and women looking for Alan Kennedy. It's been seven hours of hard slog in the hot sun. Everyone is feeling it. Yeah. I still sort of think that he'd be around here somewhere, you know, within a few hundred metres, because, you know, you don't forget the man's at 74 or something. That's right. Um, but we've done a really thorough search, and uh, I don't think there's anywhere we, where we went there. OK, we'll kick this off. Um, look, for, first and foremost, thank you very, very much for your, uh, your help. Uh, unfortunately, as you're no doubt aware, we didn't find uh, anything major. Uh, we have located some items that we will uh, check out later on. The search was extremely thorough, which was just, just fantastic from our point of view, and I can now basically report back to the coroner if required to say that that's been done and been cleared 100% in the areas that we've checked. It might be over for the police rescue and the volunteers, but Doug and Gary still have one difficult task to complete. The next step, I guess, would be to obtain a, a DNA uh, sample. We'll go around to Madeline Kelly Juniors. Um, we'll get a swab off him, and then in the future, you know, if any remains are found here, well, then we could sort of uh, get them straight away, you know, and have them analysed, and uh, maybe they could give the family some closure. search for teenager Emily Servos, Steve and Liz arrive at the block of flats where her boyfriend Daniel lives. Yeah, gentlemen, how are you? Good. Sorry. From the, we're from the uh, missing persons unit. We're trying to uh, see if this You've seen this woman girl before? Has been around here. Emily? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah? How long ago? An hour ago. An hour ago? An hour ago. Well, she's been staying here with Daniel the last couple of nights. Okay. Yeah. Um, she's been all right. Yeah. Does she appear to be in, in good health yeah. and good spirits? Oh, yeah. 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 yeah? yeah, yeah. She was only just worried they'd use it on a lock her up. And that's why the police who visited last night came up with nothing. What unit did she come from? Seven. Number seven. Number seven. Oh, okay. So Daniel leases number seven off you, does he? Seven. How long's he been here? Six weeks. Mm. Since he got out of jail. And it's just him there, but she stays with him, is that right? She has been staying with him. Yeah. So now, Liz has to convince these blokes that Emily is not in any trouble. We need to see her in person. Oh, you need to see her in person? Yeah, we've got to see her personally, yeah. Person. Okay, right. All right, so no then we can take her off being missing. But we are worried about her, her family's worried about her. Because all we want to do is make sure she's safe. They didn't say where they were going. Um, basically, we've only just missed her by one hour, unfortunately. So we're going to take a, a drive up the main street and have a look at the local train station and see if we can find her. Meanwhile, back at the missing persons unit, Gary has returned from his search for Alan Kennedy and jumps straight into the breaking case of missing Olympic boxer Ray Perez. Hello, Joanne speaking. Yeah, Gary Bailey, missing person. Joanne, how are you going? Hi, He's Christine. calling Joanne, the manager of a nursing home where the 68-year-old former champ lives. Ray has a dementing illness. It's in particular, it's related to a very long boxing career that he had in the, uh, particularly in the 1950s, early 1960s. Ray competed in the 1956 Melbourne Olympics. In an era of die-hard fight fans, Ray was a hero. But beating world champions like Lionel Rose and Rocky Gattolari took its toll on Ray Perez. He can become um, a little aggressive. It's only if someone really gets into his face that he just starts to sort of front up a bit. Bit of a character, what a sound of him. He's a real character. All right, Joanne, well, thank you very much for that. We'll, we'll okay. wander over and we'll see you shortly. The search for Emily Servos intensifies. She's last seen wearing a blue floral print dress in the company of uh, Every officer in the area is now on the lookout for the 17-year-old. I'd just like to show you guys a photo and just if you could tell us if you've seen this person at all. Well, I haven't seen her again, no. no. Okay, then. 
No problem. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thanks Sorry for your time. No worries. Okay. See you later. It's been a long, frustrating day of missed opportunities. My police have fears for her safety as she's a 17 year old. Liz decides to go back to boyfriend Daniel's home again to see if Emily has returned. At the same time, in the search for missing box of Ray Perez... Have you seen this bloke around at all? Yeah. He's a bit of a local. He's a bit of a local. Gary and John soon realise in these parts the pocket-sized pug is a real yeah, local sure. character. Yeah, very nice guy. So, yeah, yeah, very friendly. Yeah. Nice guy. He used to live down here in the old folks' home, and I think he, he just gets a bit confused about where he lives now. Yeah. And he wanted something down. Ray is also a keen punter, so Gary reckons someone at the TAB may have spotted him. How are you going? You wouldn't have seen this bloke uh, today at all, would you? One of the locals. Geez, look, I haven't seen him like three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah. You know him though, obviously. Oh, yeah, Ray. Ray yeah. Everyone knows Ray. Yeah, got a you know him from back in his fighting days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good fighter, was he? Yeah, he was. He was. Yeah. 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 He's like a legend around here. Yeah. <laughs> legend or not, after four days on the streets without food or money, everyone is getting even more concerned for the 68 year old. Back at Emily's boyfriend's place. After two days of searching, Liz's hunch has paid off. Yeah, you can. So we're just going to want to have a chat with you, all right? Mate, they're right. OK, they're with She's us. She's OK. OK. Mate, She's OK. She's right. OK. She's with you us. Want to be there, Emily? Too? Move over there. Boyfriend right. Daniel is not happy. She's OK. Yeah. She's OK. All right. Because you're missing. You're not in any trouble. You're just missing. Okay. All right. All right. Let's so come over here and I'll have a chat with you. You're in no trouble at all. All right. Your auntie has been worried about you because she hasn't heard from you for five days. And all we are worried about is you, okay? That's all we're worried about. Are you okay? Yeah? Depressed. You're depressed? Yeah. Well, I don't want to leave you here if you're depressed. Do you want some help? Counselling, mate? I'm doing counselling. Yeah? Who is? It might be um, much better. I'll ring you and say hello to him. Who, your brother? Yeah, I think it would be a good idea. She's going to be so pleased to hear from you. Nothing's happened to me. Yeah, but that, you, you know that, but they don't know that. Is that even? That's yeah, it's senior counsel Steve McAllister. How are you? Oh, there's someone who wants to say hello to you. Hello. How are you? Huh? Police are hoping Emily's aunt, uh, Yvonne, can get her you? to go home. OK. No. But no such luck. Thank you. So now Sorry. it's up to Liz and Steve. We'll take you tonight if you want. Nice you house, nice bed. You got any other clothes? Have a shower. Have a drink, something to eat. Why would you want to stay out here, Emily? There's nothing out here for you. You've got everyone down there who love you and who just want you to come home and sit and have a chat with Yvonne and your brother, people that miss you and love you and that want you to come home. I'll take you there quite comfortably now. Police know that they can't force Emily to go with them. And this is just going to continue on and on. And that you're probably not going to get help, especially if you're here. It's a delicate balancing act more. between what Emily wants and what Liz knows is best for her. So why don't we take you home? Why don't you come with us and get out of this heat? What do you say? And it's worked. But it's taken all of Liz's skill and patience to turn young Emily around. Very pleased that you're coming with us. I am so pleased, Emily. Right down. Back on the hunt for missing boxer Ray Perez, Gary and John We're right to go in. decide to check the local gym he 
before they leave the area to search the CBD. All right, there you go. The former boxer is a fixture around here. And Johnny Lewis, who trained Jeff Fennick, yeah. knows him well. You fought about five or six world champions. Oh, yeah. How long ago is that? That was in the 60s. The caliber of fighters that he fought were nothing but first class. He, he, was one of, he was one right out of the box. He won the gold medal. And he said he brought home to his dad and says, the gold medal run for your dad. And his dad started crying. He that's what Ray told me. Dad started crying. And then he saw it, then he saw, geez, my dad's proud of me. And he said, I am, son. I am proud of you. And that's exactly how these boys still feel about Ray Perez. Some of the boys have mentioned that he, that they've seen him, so everyone will keep a, a look out. And yeah, no, that'd be good, him. you know. He doesn't know where he is, who he is, or what, you know. It's terrible to go like that. Anybody that's seen Ray Perez around, I plead to them, I plead to them, to get in touch with somebody, somebody, somebody's pal, who me. And we'll, anything that we can do will help you. And you know who your pals are, don't you, Ray? You know. You know the blokes who you, you love. If Ray's watching this, can you please report to the police and let them know that everything's OK? Seven days after she disappeared, the missing persons unit are bringing Emily Servos home to her aunt. You ready? Let's mm. go in. Right. You ready? Okay. Let's go. Hello. Liz and Steve work towards every time they start a case. It's the most rewarding part of the job. Just having it back so quickly. I don't have to worry another day. I just, I'm still a bit shocked that she's here. Worth God Express. <laughs> it was a fantastic result. We've uh, found her out at Canley Vale and we've brought her home to her auntie's place. Um, obviously, we're ecstatic. We're just so excited for the family and just so pleased that we've found her safe and well. Across town, for Gary and John, there is finally some great news. The 68-year-old former Olympic flyweight is back home and fighting fit. He was down at the local pub last night and we had a call from the local pub and that people around this area know him and they just bring him back to us. So he was just around my car. All right, we'll go and see him then, eh? OK. OK, thanks. Hello. How are you going? All right, pretty good. Gary Bailey for the missing person student. Missing person? Yeah. Why, I wasn't missing. They, yeah, well, um... I went for a bit of a walk and they thought I had disappeared. Oh, God. Everything's all right. That's yeah. why I'm with you, know. You feeling all right? I feel OK. I'm done. Yeah? Well, I think I'm meant to be all right. I don't think I'm too bad. What are they worrying about? I'm not a little kid. I know where I'm going, I know where I am and all of that. That might be so, well, well, see, but because of his dementia, no, Ray but... forgets things. Because you don't know where I am and you don't know if I'm hurt. Or like where he lives. My car or something. But the main thing is, mate, you're well, you know, we were really, really starting to get worried about you. One thing about me, I don't drink, I don't smoke. Yeah. Don't take drugs, or don't touch anything. Only I love beautiful women. Beautiful women follow me with a mattress on their back. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, uh, yeah. Anyway, it's great news. Um, you're well and we'll be in Thanks contact. You look after yourself and you take it easy, yeah. won't you? See you later. Okay, okay, mate. We'll be in touch. Okay, good. Good on right. you. Right. He's in good physical condition. He's, uh, his biggest problem, though, is his dementia. But it's really good, you know, that we've got him home and just hope we can keep him there. Meanwhile, back at the Sydney Missing Persons Unit, after finding Emily Servos, Steve dives straight into his next case 
for missing father Grant Andrews. Yes, go speak to uh, Tracy, please. He's calling Grant's invalid wife, who reported him missing yesterday. Grant got a phone call. Supposedly his father had had a heart attack. And we rang just to see what was going on. Grant's dad answered the phone, so we knew everybody was all right up there. OK, yep. He's got access to uh, bank accounts, has he? I know $2,000 is going in that account. Mm. So we could buy medical equipment for me. Right, OK. But Grant didn't buy the medical equipment for his disabled wife. So Steve rings his bank to ask if he's withdrawn the money. There was um, $2,000 taken out of his account yesterday. Withdrawal, OK. Yeah. And Grant's um, bank yeah, confirms the withdrawal. But where he is and what he's doing with the money is still a mystery. This case is uh, quite a worrying case. Like, um, we've got a gentleman um, in his 50s who's got a wife and kids, um, receives a phone call at work, says a story to a workmate and goes. Um, and no, no trace of him. Next week... Seen him at all? The search no. for no. missing dad Grant Andrews. There's a million of these little camping areas up around here. And his grieving family closes ranks. Hopefully, I'll bring him home to you, eh? In South Australia, they dubbed them Thelma and Louise. She actually came into the bedroom to get the suitcase, and at that time I woke up. But whatever happened to best mates Joyce and Hazel? Two women have lived together and not a trace. Nothing has been heard from them since. And where is Stanley, the mechanic? It's quite unusual for someone to ring from a phone box on the side of a freeway, say that their car's broken down and then not heard of again. He rang his wife, then nothing. I just don't understand it. It's just not his character to disappear like this. 